Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to learn how to draw an electron configuration as well as learn the shorthand of writing this down called writing electron configurations. Before we move on, I have to explain what is an electron configuration. It's very easy. It's just how, where are the electrons, um, where are they located around the atom? So if I've got an atom here, such as oxygen, I would like to know uh, how many electrons there are in the inside shells and how many electrons, electrons there are in the outermost shells. So um, to draw them down, you need to get some information from the periodic table. So here I've got calcium and oxygen, and I've pulled the essentials that we will need to draw down the atoms. So the oxygen atom here has an atomic number of eight. If you're wondering what that Z symbol means, I think it's a German name, Atomzahl, meaning the figurative number. Um, so it's got an atomic number of eight, and the atomic number tells us how many protons. But since it's an atom, it's neutrally charged, so it must also have eight electrons, which is the important information we wanted to get out of the atomic number. How many electrons will oxygen have in total? And it should add up to eight. But moving forward, more information we can find out from the periodic table is that it's in period two, also, you know, uh, the, the second row. The period number tells you exactly how many electron shells there will be, and that's very helpful. So it's got a periodic second period, therefore it'll have two electron shells. We also get some other information, the group number, group 16. So if we ignore the, the if we, if we ignore the, the number 10 and see what's left over, uh, then we can find out that it has um, six electrons in its outermost shell. So that gives us more information. So uh, from that, we can draw it quite easily without, ha without having to count them all the way through. I've also got another example here with calcium, and you can, you can see the similar information there. Atomic number, 20, therefore 20 electrons as well. The period number is four, so we would expect to have four, uh, four electron shells. And we've got group two, so therefore two electrons in its outermost shell. So if I uh, turn on my uh, layer here, which has the electron shells drawn in for me, nice and circular, uh, I can now just start assigning the electrons to them. So if I just forget the, this fact here and just go by the information I have over here, the fact that it has two shells and it has six electrons as atomo shell, I can safely assume that all the energy levels, the, all the energy, all the electron shells on the inside are completely full. So here we go. So the inside shell can fit two at most. So that one is full. Now this number six tells me there must be six in its outermost shell. So here I go around the outside. I will try and space them apart uh, as if I was going around the edges of a square. So one, two, three, four. Now the rule is you start doubling them up. So now that I've got two left to go, I just start pairing this up over here and I'll pair it over there. So let's see if this, if this adds up to the atomic number. Well, so you got two in the inside shell, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight electrons in total, exactly what the atomic number told us it should be. Uh, so let's apply it to something a little bit more complex, a bigger atom, such as calcium. Calcium here has 20 electrons. That will take us some time to count all the way out, doing it manually. But if we do this trick by looking at the period number and the group number, we can do it quite quickly. So I know that the inside shell has a maximum of two electrons. The next shell, it will have um, eight electrons, so I will just do this quickly. Now I know I, in the previous example I went around the edges of the uh, circle as if it was a box before I started pairing them up, but I happen to know that this one is full, so I'm just going to double them up as I go around anyway. And the next one also can fit eight. And the outermost shell, the valence shell, says that it must have two electrons because that's the group number. So here we go, one, two. Two electrons in its outermost shell. Now let's count them up to see if they add up to 20 as the atomic number predicts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, done. So everything adds up. It's a very quick way of drawing your uh, electron configurations just by knowing where the uh, element is located on the periodic table and getting some information from that. Let's move on to, to writing electron configurations. So as you saw from the calcium example, it's quite of a 
big atom and it will take you some time to keep drawing these electron shells, especially if you're drawing like electric configuration diagrams for a reaction, say like calcium mixed with uh, fluorine atoms. Uh, you will need to draw lots and lots of these electron shells and it will take you some time. Another way of getting around this problem is to write the electron configurations. It's kind of like a shorthand. So if I just turn on another layer here, writing electron configurations. So when you write the electron configurations, you just simply write the sequence, write the uh, how many electrons there are in the first shell, then put a comma to separate, and you'd write the number of electrons in the second shell, and you write that number down, and you separate with a comma, and so forth until you get to the outside. So you go from the inside to the outside. Let's look at our oxygen atom here. Well, the first shell has two electrons, and I separate this with a comma. The second shell has six, so I write the number six. Done. That tells me enough information of where the electrons are located on the oxygen atom. Let's look at the calcium atom here. So the first shell, it has two. The next shell has eight. The next shell has eight, and the last shell has two. So I can write this as two, eight, eight, and two. Done. Very simple. Now, please be aware that when you get to senior levels of chemistry, and this will be towards the, the, the high school year levels uh, with uh, chemistry, you will find that they have a more uh, precise way of writing electron configurations. Now, I won't go into too much detail. Uh, I won't, won't go into the details of how this works because it's outside of the, the scope of this video. But I will write it down so you can be aware or at least recognize it when you see it in perhaps your textbook. Um, and also know which one your teacher wants. So if I just draw a line down here, another way of writing the electron configuration of oxygen, it would be written uh, as following. So the first energy level, so I write one for the first energy level. S is a subshell and it can hold a maximum of two electrons and that happens to be how many electrons there are in the first shell. The next shell, so second energy level, it also has another S subshell, and it can fit a maximum of two, but there's still more left to go in this en in this second energy level. So there is actually there is, there is actually another energy uh, there's another subshell which we call a P subshell, and the remainder goes into there. So if you if you see electron configurations when you're googling them on the web, sometimes you'll see this two comma six, and sometimes you'll see one S two, two S two, two P four, etc. Uh, that's the other way of writing them down, but it's a little bit more complex uh, and it won't make any sense to you unless you've done things like orbitals, which comes from Erwin Schrodinger, which you can read all about later on in perhaps uh, a future video. All right, see you later guys. Hope this helps. Bye.